Last week, Apple absolutely smashed it. They knocked it out of the park with the M4 Mac Mini in particular, but with all the announcements they made last week, I think even people that aren't ardent Apple fans like us would have to admit, Apple are back and they mean business. So in this video, we're gonna recap what Apple gave us last week, but not only that, I want to just stop for a moment and celebrate the moment in time that we are living in as iPhone, iPad, and Mac users. This is a golden period. If this is the first of my videos you've seen, my name's David and I make videos about Apple gear every week. Why? Well, as you can see, I'm surrounded by Apple gear and I love just sitting down and chatting to you about all the latest gear that I'm using and seeing what you think of it as well. The Apple ecosystem has changed the way, not only the way that we live, but of millions of people around the world. It's completely changed the way that we work, communicate and play. So in this video, I'm actually gonna celebrate, celebrate how good a times we are living as iPhone, iPad and Mac users, but also I'm gonna recap on what we got last week, starting off with the iMac. Now the iMac got a fairly basic makeover. It's quite clear, even though Apple, if they chose to, they could put the M4 Pro chip in it, they don't. The iMac sits exactly where they wanted to sit in the ecosystem of all the different Macs that we've got. It got some deeper colors. It got a center stage camera as well. It got the 16 gigs of RAM minimum, which is across the range now. And it got the nano text to glass option as well, which is something Apple were really pushing hard last week. And that was kind of it for the iMac. They're plenty powerful machines, even though they look pretty. And I love the iMac I've got behind me. They are still very much a consumer level Mac. So that was kind of the basic announcements on Monday. But then Tuesday, things really started to spice up when we got to the Mac Mini. Now, the Mac Mini, for me, and I think, judging on all the comments I got last week, over 250 comments on a video I made last week, I think the Mac Mini was the start of the show. It We knew it was going to be a redesign, and they really did deliver. And it is tiny now. It lives up to its name of being a Mac Mini. It's only five inches by five inches. There's infinite storage options available. You can go from 256 gigs all the way up to eight terabytes on the Mac Mini Pro. And the same is true of memory. You can go from the minimum 16 gigs all the way up to 64 gigs. The M4 chip starts with a 10-core CPU and a 10-core GPU, but it can be configured on the Pro chip, the M4 Pro, all the way up to a 14-core CPU and a 20-core GPU, which is the config that I've gone for. But I think when things started to get really serious last week was when they started talking about the I.O., the ports on the Mac Mini. Now, I don't really get into all these rumor mills and follow the rumor sites that closely because I honestly believe Apple let out just enough, just the bits they want us to hear. And as far as I'm aware, nobody had seen Thunderbolt 5 coming to the M4 Mac Mini Pro. And that could be a game changer. Now they gave these headline figures of 120 gigs per second transfer speeds. It's not quite what it says on the tin. Those speeds are just for displays. So if you want to use an 8K display, you've got those full 120 gigs speeds available from the Thunderbolt 5 ports, but you still get around about 80 gigs per second transfer speeds for data. So that's where I think you can be quite canny and possibly save yourself some money. There's not a lot of Thunderbolt 5 storage devices on the market just yet, but my thoughts are that when Apple makes an announcement like that and catches the market unaware, you can bet that all of those third-party aftermarket external SSD manufacturers are very quickly going to get some Thunderbolt 5 SSDs to market, and that will change the way that you can configure this Mac Mini. In fact, talking about changing the way that you're configuring it, when I bought mine, I went with the basic Ethernet connection, but I'm thinking about ramping that up next week and getting a 10 gigabit Ethernet connection because I might end up going the Synology route with this Mac Mini and using that as, as a NAS drive, as a backup, something to edit from, something to store on here in the studio. I think the time has come for that. And for that, I will need to upgrade the Ethernet port. So I'm thinking of doing that, but that's how quickly this Mac Mini has changed my mind. I was initially buying it just as a review unit because it really interested me. But suddenly I'm finding myself feeling really, really excited about it. Genuinely excited. I can't wait to get my hands on it. And I think at this point, I really think it could possibly replace my M1 Max MacBook Pro. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I'm in a very lucky position I get to try these Macs. But I think this Mac Mini could be that powerful. I could end up using it as my main rig here in the studio. Prices range from about £600 to around about £5,000. There's honestly a Mac Mini out there for everybody, and I think that is going to be an absolute beast. This M4 chip is another game changer. Then we got the MacBook Pros. Obviously, we knew we were going to get Thunderbolt 5 ports after the announcement the day before. That was a given. It's got the 16 gigs memory now, the minimum amount of memory across all Macs, the nano texture glass option, which they had on the iMac as well. You've got the 12 megapixel center stage camera, and it comes in two colors, space black 
and silver. The SDR brightness was increased from 500 nits up to 1,000 nits. So there's no new wallpaper, so it's a fairly soft launch and prices range from around about £3,000 through to about £8,000. So again, a MacBook out there for everybody. So those were the announcements. Oh, they also made a little announcement at the end of that one saying that the MacBook Airs, M2 and M3 MacBook Airs, now come with the minimum 16 gigs of memory as well. Obviously, they're pushing hard for this Apple intelligence. Don't worry, I am going to mention Apple intelligence and the ecosystem a little bit later on. Which kind of brings me around to us celebrating what we've got right now from Apple. In the Apple community, it struck me recently, we do seem to complain an awful lot. If you watch other channels about Androids, about Samsungs or Galaxy, they are really happy and just sing the praises of what they use. And yet some, for some reason with Apple gear, we seem to come down on the negatives. I don't know if that's because we always expect better and better or the bar is set so high, I don't know. But we just seem to have this ability to try and drag everything down about Apple gear. And I just wanted to stop that for a moment and look at what we have got rather than what we haven't got. Let's just remember and let's just recall that we are where we are right now with smartphones because of Apple. If they hadn't bought the iPhone out in 2007, the slab phone, touchscreen smartphone that we've got now would not be a thing. Yes, there was BlackBerry just before it, but the iPhone changed everything forever. That's Apple. And that's something we should be really, really proud of. Why did I switch to Apple? I tell you why, because it looked cool. Not so much just the iPhone, that was neat, but it was the Macs as well. I, I used to go into studios and see all these really cool dudes working behind Macs, and I wanted to be part of that gang. After I started getting behind a Mac, I then realized, hell, these things are powerful, and they work, and they do so much, and they're so easy to use. Once I was there, I was hooked, and I've never looked back. I guess I've been an Apple user now for around about 15, 16 years, and I'm really happy, genuinely happy with what they're giving us. So of course, the iPhone is kind of central to all of our lives. If you're a Mac user, there's a very good chance you've got an iPhone as well, and the iPhone plays a central role to everything we do. This year, the iPhone 16 took a bit of heat, and I'm trying to work out why. People are saying it's unfinished because of Apple intelligence, and yes, there's a certain truth to that, I get that, but the actual phone that we've got in our hand right now, I've been using it for two months, it's probably, yeah, I would say definitely, the best iPhone that I've used. It's got a better battery life than the 15 Pro Max I had last year. It's faster and it's lighter. It's recording in ProRes Log on the other camera right now. I use it virtually every video to give you that cutaway shot. It's a really, really good phone. And even people that aren't iPhone users, I think would honestly say that from a video point of view, not necessarily just camera, but video, iPhones are still class leading. And I'm a reviewer. So when I get the iPhone, and don't worry, I will be making the six months with the iPhone. I'll be making my year with the iPhone next year with the iPhone 16 Pro Max. I'll find things to say about it. I'll find some small faults about it because I'm a reviewer and I have to try and be objective and look to where they can improve. But from a day-to-day -day user point of view and taking myself away from what I do here and just being somebody that loves Apple gear, it's a really, really good phone. And by the way, if you're one of the 75%-ish people watching this that haven't subscribed yet and you're enjoying the content I make, that subscription really helps. Clearly, it's gonna be an expensive time of year for me. I've just ordered a brand new Mac Mini. I want to carry on making these videos for you every single week. So if you're new to the channel, you're enjoying the content, or maybe you've been here before, just remember to go and subscribe and turn on notifications as well. I know it sounds simple, but it really, really helps the channel out. And I've got so much exciting content I wanna make for you. If you can just help me with that one little thing, it makes a massive difference. So while we're talking about the products we've got, let's just quickly go through some of the others. The iPads. This year, the iPads got a makeover, the iPad Pro and the iPad Mini. Now, I've never been an iPad user before, but this year I decided I was going to jump in and buy the M4 iPad Pro. I got the 13-inch model initially with the nano texture. I swapped that out, so I haven't got the nano texture glass anymore, and I'm really happy with it. I didn't know if I was going to hate it or not. I didn't know if it was going to fit into my workflow. It's sitting here in front of me now. It is with me on every video that I make, and I love using it. It's always on my desk. It was never going to replace a Mac, but it works hard. A few weeks ago, I edited a complete YouTube video using the external drive and Final Cut on the iPad. It's that powerful. I just wanted to prove how powerful it can be. I keep hearing these things about you can't multitask. We've got split over and you've got slide over. That's all I need. It does its job well. Of course it's powerful. We know how powerful it is, but it is a really good tool to use. And it's the best display. Let's not forget that tandem OLED display is gorgeous, absolutely stunning. I'm possibly going to end up using it as a second display with the Mac Mini that I'm getting. That'll be sitting underneath my studio display. And for the second display, I might well end up using, via sidecar, the iPad Pro. It's that good. Then we get on to the Mini that I bought just a couple of weeks ago. There's all this talk about jelly scrolling. 
look, where that iPad sits and the people that generally use that iPad, I'm not saying it's just for kids or just for your parents. It's not. It's a great device, what it is. But it's often bought by corporates to give out to their employees for note taking, for using it out in the field. Those people aren't going to worry about jelly scrolling. They're not going to be looking to see if one side of the screen is moving slightly faster than the other. It's a good display for the size tablet it is and for what it's supposed to be used for. Apparently, a lot of medical professionals use it and a lot of pilots use it. Now, to be honest, either of those people, I would rather not be looking at the jelly scrolling on the screen <laughs> considering what they're doing for a job. I'm just fine with it. It's horses for courses. The iPad mini sits where it sits. It looks pretty. It's got a decent battery life and it works well enough. So the iPads, I don't think there's that much to complain about, really. The Macs, well, we've kind of touched on the Macs already. Apple Silicon changed everything and it looks like M4 Apple Silicon is going to do that all over again. Right now, you can get into the Mac ecosystem from about £600 of the Mac mini. And if you've got enough money, you can trip a Mac Pro out to over 13,000 pounds. There is a Mac there for everybody, every walk of life, every workflow, every profession. We are living in such a great spell, we really are. We talked about the iMac early on, and the MacBook Air, for instance, now with the 16 gigs of memory minimum, they are great machines. They will get through so much work for you. And I think what I put my Macs through every single day, and they barely ever complain. They are such workhorses. Again, what's there to complain about? The Vision Pro. Not for everybody, but again, it was Apple at their best, it was innovative, and it was groundbreaking. I honestly believe it's a case of we're not ready for the Vision Pro, rather than the Vision Pro not being the item of the future, the way that we could be computing in the future, personal computing of the future. I've went for a demo, it blew my mind. I haven't got the money to spend on it, and I don't think I've got the use case for it yet. But I was very tempted with the idea of working with a massive display in front of me. If I was the kind of guy that was working remotely or working away from the studio more often, possibly I would be tempted. But as I say, innovation comes at a price. So no, it's not a device for every man right now. But we hear there's a cheaper version coming next year. And soon, I think we will begin to develop into working on that kind of device. You've got to admit, Apple did, again, break barriers with the Vision Pro. And then we can talk about Apple Watch. I was very slow coming to the Apple Watch. In fact, I only got my first one a couple of years ago. But once you used it, it just makes that quality of life difference. A small thing I tell you that I really love is the way when you're sitting working at the desk, we're all guilty of not getting up, getting absorbed in what we're doing too much. The way it just says time to stand, I know it's small, but it actually works. It, incre it increases and improves your quality of life. You've got the ECG test on there, the blood oxygen test on there. Possibly soon, a non-invasive diabetic test as well. The Apple Watch changed smartwatches and the way we can monitor our health forever. Yes, it was slow in getting to where it needed to be, but Apple kind of broke the ground and then molded it into what they knew we were using it for. Again, another brilliant device and part of Apple's ecosystem, which brings us to the Apple ecosystem, something that us Apple users should be incredibly proud of. It's second to none in what it offers us. Sidecar, screen mirroring, airdrop, universal control, the remote camera feature that you've got on the Apple Watch, for instance. Handoff is brilliant, whether it's here in the studio with a web page and handing it to another Mac, or coming back in from a run, having a podcast on the phone, and being able to put it onto the HomePods. The ecosystem we've got is fantastic, but Apple did that. Apple makes our lives just easier, quicker, and brings everything together cohesively for us just to sit back and enjoy. And I, for one, would be lost without that. You've got the HomePods, as I said, you've got CarPlay, Apple TV. Apple TV is now such a great streaming platform. I watch not a great deal of TV, but the TV I watch is often on Apple TV, and their originals look amazing. When Apple decides to put their minds to something, nine out of 10, they get it right. There is a lot to celebrate. Is that coming through? And okay, we need to talk about Apple intelligence. The way that Apple have gone about it is very strange. How they didn't see it coming, I don't know. They've got the best brains in the business there, but they seem to miss the curve very slightly. The rollout has been terrible, to be honest. It's a mess. Even I'm confused, and I kind of do this for a job. But Tim Cook recently said they don't want to be first, but the best. And I think that is a pretty good mantra to go by. A lot of the features that we see on the Apple intelligence, or on artificial intelligence rather, aren't for me, and possibly aren't for you, and aren't for a lot of iPhone and Apple users. A lot of them are just gimmicky, visual intelligence, Gemmoji, image playground. They could be the kind of things that once you used them and play with them once, they were one and done. But the cleanup tool in the Photos app that I've been using works really well. It's one of the best cleanup tools that I've used. And for me, I'd rather wait that little bit longer, get fewer artificial intelligence tools, but ones that are actually going to change the way that I can work and what I do every day. And cleanup is a great example of that. The voice recording 
of the calls as well. That can be really useful. If you're on a call to somebody and you're trying to take details, you can just hit the button now, record that call, and you'll get the voice note in notes, plus you'll get full transcript as well. Things like that just make using an iPhone and working in the Apple ecosystem such a joy. Siri, I'm sure, will improve. It will get there eventually. I don't know how much you use your voice assistant for every day and how complex a task you use your voice assistant for every day. I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. I use it more some days than others, but I'm not a massive user of artificial intelligence. And considering what I do, I'm absolutely heaven sent for it. I should be fodder for artificial intelligence, but I'm not. I kind of know what I'm trying to achieve. And if I do ask the voice assistant something, it does a job okay. I'm not saying that the other phones and other systems haven't got better resistance. They have. Siri will get better. Apple will catch up. And when they do, mark my words, they will give us the tools we want doing the things that we want. Now, look, Apple hasn't got it right in everything. Is the camera control button this year perfect? No. Was it a little bit rushed? Quite possibly, yes. I'm sure it'll iterate. I'm sure it'll get better. Could iPad OS be refined? Yes. The Files app could be slightly better. There are things about it that could be better but it works and it sits perfectly within your Apple world on your desk doing what it needs to do. So you can pick fault in anything. And I just wanted to get through in this video what great devices we have got at the moment. We've got real reason to be happy and proud and sing the praises of what Apple have given us. Yes, from time to time, we need to call them up on the things they get wrong. But the trouble is when Apple makes mistakes because of the sheer volume of users around the world, it becomes this massive tsunami. It grows very, very quickly into this huge problem. Apple generally get on top of it. Apple do solve things. I had problems recently with updates. My watch battery was draining really quickly. That's been solved. Every time they bring out these little updates, they are listening. They hear what we're saying and they do tend to improve. So I think it's just time that we sit back and say, you know what, I'm really happy with what Apple are giving us. I'm happy with the products we've got now and particularly the Macs and iPads. Right now, I don't think they could be a lot better. You might have heard me say a little bit earlier on in the video that I bought a Mac mini and I ticked a lot of boxes. Well, this is exactly the specs that I chose and why I chose it.